I'm Heather Wetzler. And I'm Bob Wrestleman. And welcome to Bright Ideas TV. Bright Ideas TV brings you the smartest and brightest ideas out there. And we're interviewing people with imaginative ideas that made a real difference in the way the world works. Who's this week's guest, Bob? This week's guest is the noted video and projection designer, Tal Yardan. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But before I get to Tal, we have to do something, Heather, and that is what? We need to say who's sponsoring the show. And this week, Bright Ideas TV is sponsored by one of your faves, Bob, DevOps. DevOps.com is the premier website for content and ideas about modern DevOps. DevOps is where the world meets DevOps. Yes, and so hurry over there now and uh, read some of their timely articles. They're also starting to run uh, webinars about uh, DevOps operations, which are were engaging. I've watched a few. So I'm going to introduce Tal by telling a story that happens before Tal, okay? And this goes back to 1989. So back in 1989, even before there was this thing called the internet, or there was this thing uh, called uh, CD-ROMs, people had to distribute software. And in October 31st of 1989, I was part of the Word 6 rollout, Microsoft's Word 6 rollout, and that was in Copley Square in Boston. And what they did for the rollout is they, all the attendees, big, big conference, you know, Microsoft Party, they showed a movie, and the movie was on Halloween, and it was a treat for you for Halloween. And the way the movie went is that, you know, the doorbell rings, and, you know, it's like, you know, thunder and lightning, who's at the door, who's at the door, and the family, the young kid goes to the door, and he opens the door, and there's a box, a Word 6 software box going trick or treat. And, oh, Word 6 is, Word 6 is here, Word 6 is here. And this is back in the day before you downloaded anything from the internet, because there was no internet. So Word 6 and the Word 6 box was a big deal and it was a treat for you for Halloween. You now, the world now has wor Word 6. So the, the end, the film comes to an end and then on stage becomes a line of chorus dancers dressed up as Word 6 boxes. So it was like the uh, Radio City Rockettes in Word 6 boxes and they did a dance as Word 6 dancers. And that was just really impressive. So I thought, wow, that was really cool, really smart. They ran the movie and now they integrated these dancers into the movie. Little did I know, little did I know that that little spark of creativity would turn into something much bigger later on. And that's what I'm here to talk with Tal Yardan about, because he is a pivotal player in the world of what's called live cinema. So instead of going through all the uh, hocus pocus about Tal, I'm just going to read his bio because it is really, really impressive. And here I go. Let's hope I get it right because you know I mess up on the hard words, Heather. All right. So Tal Yardan is an international video and projection designer with over 200 productions for stage. He is a longtime collaborator with director Ivo Van Hove, including the recent production of The Damned of the, excuse me, Damned of the, Excuse me, I blew it, Heather. I can't do it. All right. The recent production of The Damned at the Park Avenue Armory. His recent work on Broadway includes Indecent, Sunday in the Moon, an ACT San Francisco production, Passing Strange at the Woman Theater in Philadelphia, David Bowie's Lazarus at New York and in London. He's also designed Between the World and Me at the Apollo Network at the National Theater, Obsession and Antigone at the Barbican, Hamlet and the, uh, let's see, in the King, uh, Hamlet and King Lear in Shakespeare in the Park. His work for opera includes, and this is a big deal, uh, Boris Good Enough, um, The Exterminating Angel, 170 Days, uh, Salome, uh, Mazeppa, La Clemenza de Tito, and Idiomenio, I hope I got it right, correct me if I'm wrong, and Brokeback Mountain. And in the back, what you'll see in the backdrop for me is one of the production designs that uh, Tal did for Macbeth in Lyon, France. So Heather, please join me in welcoming to Bright Ideas TV, Tal Yarden. Welcome, Tal. Thanks so much. It's uh, great to join you here on the internet. On the, on um, the internet. <laughs> The internets, where well, we have the many internets, internets here, yes, yes, yes. and this is one of them. Okay. So, so Tal. Let, yeah. Let me tell you a little bit about what I do. Okay. Um, I've been working as a video designer, projection designer, which means that I am incorporating video visual elements into live performance for many, many years. 
have worked with choreographers, with dancers, with rock and roll shows, with big festival events, I BJ'd, and mostly what I do is create content for live theatrical experiences. More and more that content is uh, becoming uh, what we're calling live cinema. And what that is, it's a, what I think of as a hybrid form that's evolved over the past uh, 10 years, but really much more in the past three years, which means bringing live cinematic elements to a stage experience that's using live cameras on stage, but using them as cinematic tools, which means you're getting very detailed close-ups with proper lighting. And what the audience ends up experiencing is watching a movie get made live before their eyes. So they're watching a play or performance. And at the same time, they're watching the cinematic expression of that, often on a big projection screen, sometimes on a big LED screen. And there are a few designers who are very active in this field. I, one of them. So, so no, no. let me, okay, continue, please. No, go ahead. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is, okay, so it's almost as if you're melding uh, theater and cinema into a common experience. And, and the other thing I just heard you report is you're saying that you're actually people are watching a film get made. So after a production, do you repurpose the cinema, the video or the cinema or the film that's made into an independent release or is it tied no, to that production experience? No, it's really tied to that production. I mean, what, what I love and my passion, my interest is in creating a live experience for an audience. I love being in the theater. I love being in a big room filled with an audience experiencing something that's being created live for me. So there's always, there's always the unknown, what's gonna happen. You know, there's always that un bit of uncertainty, even with the most practiced actors, you still have a sense of liveness, that they are there with you in the room responding to the audience. This adds a whole new dimension to it because what I'm doing is bringing very trained uh, cinematographers onto the stage, teaching them a series of shots that they need to uh, capture uh, moment by moment through the course of an evening. And then with a live editor recompiling those images that are being created on stage into a live piece of a live cinema, live film. And so for, uh, it, it can take many, many different forms. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, and I have to say one other thing is a lot of uh, theater makers, theater directors are more and more looking to film scripts and cinema as a source for creating live stage events. So then it's very natural to incorporate cameras as well. So an example might be a few years ago, I worked on a project that was based on a series of Antonioni films. And I can give you an example. There was a scene in which a group of characters is on a boat in the Aegean Sea. So how do you do this when you're on stage? How to, how, how to convincingly give this experience to an audience? I had uh, worked with a set designer to create a large blue screen stage that became the stage environment with the idea that I would shoot a whole series of backgrounds for all the different scenes that were taking place during the course of this uh, live stage event. So if something was taking place in a hospital, I would shoot a hospital background. If it was taking place uh, outdoors with people shooting off uh, firecrackers, then I would film that. And we would marry that together using blue screen matting technology with the live uh, actors. 
So in the case of a group of people on a boat and they G in, we had all the actors sit on the ground and on the stage, play their scene with a couple of cameras positioned from different angles and fans blowing so that their hair was moving and some reflector board that was creating a sparkle of light off the water. And then I had gone out with my cameras onto a ship to shoot a series of backgrounds with the horizon going up and down so you feel like you're really at sea. And all that is being put together live on the stage. So in the kind of work that I do and the way we presented this piece, our uh, technical crew, which is quite elaborate, really becomes in a sense the, the instruments of an orchestra that are all working in concert to create a single unified experience. And so all of our technical crew is operating cameras, moving dollies, doing live switching, adjusting blue key depending on the lighting scene by scene, working with the sound, working with the light, and so you end up with a, an orchestra of maybe 10, 15 people who are assembling this live cinematic event. So, so I, I, have, I have a question, just a, a technical question. So going back to the boat scene, were the cameras actually, did you put cameras on boats in, out in the harbor and then broadcast those images? No, it wasn't, it wasn't live, it was pre-recorded. Okay, yeah, thank you. In that case, yeah, no, it was pre-recorded. So let me quickly give you another example, which is uh, you referred to one of the projects I did as network. Um, and I'm very glad to announce it was just announced yesterday that network is coming to Broadway with Brian Cranston starring in it again. It's based on this very seminal movie from the late 70s. Um, uh, and it takes place largely in a TV studio. And what we did for the set was recreate a television studio with the soundproof booth, with many monitors, with switchers, and a crew that incorporates a number of different camera people operating studio cameras, but also operating handheld uh, jibs. We call, I mean, I'm sorry, handheld gimbals. So they're walking around uh, doing these long traveling shots, capturing faces of the actors in a very carefully choreographed sequence of events to create a complex, rich uh, theatrical experience for its audience. Is, um, I, at the end, I'm gonna ask you to give me some URLs to see if we can get some uh, samples so we can put it on the broadcast. Okay. On the broadcast page so that uh, people can go see it. Wow, it sounds so. The the notion so whereas in a in a typical play, most of the work of the director is done in the weeks before the production, where but now the role of a director probably takes a whole new light. Or it's a, or are there multiple directors now involved in a production? Well, there no, there there's still a single theatrical director, but what ends up happening is I act as a designer, but also in essence as a director of photography. Uh -huh. So I'm um, figuring out what all the different shots are going to be, and working in great collaboration with the director over many months, often a year in advance, to carefully storyboard and plan out what this experience is going to be. Rehearsing the crew, rehearsing the actors a great deal so that they can achieve this uh, experience live every night. Wow, that's amazing. Guess what? We need another 15 minutes, but we don't have it. We need another 15, another 15 weeks. We don't have it. Well, first of all, everybody needs to go to New York now. I'm going to go get my plane ticket. Go, maybe, I hope it doesn't snow or any of that. Go to New York. We have to see Talia Dance production of Network. And what theater are you going to be in? Do you know yet? I believe it's going to be in the Court, C-O-R-T, Court Theater on court Broadway. Theater on Broadway. Wow, what an accomplishment. What an accomplishment. So, Heather, next week we have... Next week, we have Jared Arms. And Jared, after losing more than 10 close, of his, 10 close of his friends due to gun violence, 
started to teach himself how to code because he wanted to build an application which would centralize obituaries. And after teaching himself to code, he came up with this technology platform for communities and businesses. And he does a, real, a lot of really amazing stuff in the inner cities of St. Louis. And so he's going to be here next week. And uh, next week, is he's going to be here. And this week, we had Talyar Dan. And it's time to go because I am Bob Resselman. And I'm Heather Wetzler. And you've been watching Bright Ideas TV.